Hi students, welcome back to one more class under Public International Law. In today's class, we will be discussing about one important doctrine or clause or principle, whatever we call, whatever we call that is Calvo class. Uh, this Calvo class is one outdated doctrine which is no more being in use, but still, in your examinations, frequently questions are being asked on this. In today's class, we will be having a brief discussion as to what is this Calvo class and what are how it uh, got its origin, what are the important principles involved, all these things will be studied in today's session. So, synopsis as far as Calvo class is concerned, as they will be asking it as a short notes question, these are few important explanations we are supposed to write whenever this question is being asked. First one is etymology of this doctrine, why this term Calvo has come for this principle of law. So, that etymology of the doctrine which we will be studying and further what is the doctrine all about, what this doctrine tells, what it implies that is also going to be studied and further principles involved in the Calvo class. What are the basis to assert at this principle? Why this has to be done like this? There are few things are said in this doctrine regarding settlement of disputes uh, whenever international investments are involved. Uh, in this regard, how disputes are to be settled? In this regard, this principle has been uh, put, for, put forth by this uh, Calvo. So, what are the justifications or the basis for such an assertion will also be studied very briefly and moving further, reason for the emergence of this doctrine. Why this doctrine came out as such will also be discussed and further, what is its current relevance? As on today, is this Calvo class is being still used? If at all it is used, who are all using it? If at all those this doctrine is no more being in use, what is the reason behind? The same, all these things will be studied in today's class. So, for this, this is the outline. If you write explanation to all these points, whatever is shown on the slide, that is going to be the answer to the question Calvo class. So, first of all, etymology as to the origin of the word. So, this is the photograph of this Calvo, Carlos Calvo. He, let us try to find out some of the important details about this person. So, he is a diplomat and a scholar and he is from Argentina. You know, the Argentina is one of the nations in South America, Latin America. So, it is from there he has come further. He has written a book. His title of this book is Theory and Practice in Europe and America, International Law, Theory and Practice in Europe and America, which was published in 1868. And it is in this book, for the first time, he has mentioned or he has stated this clause, what we now popularly call it as Calvo clause. So, this is the background of this clause or the principle, why we call it as Calvo clause? It is because it is Carlos Calvo one of the diplomat as well as a scholar from Argentina who has used this doctrine or put forward this doctrine in his work called International Theory and Practice in Europe and America. This is the etymological background of this Calvo clause. Moving further, next comes is to the principle. What this principle is all about? What is the principle involved in this case? So, it is based on the principle that equality of the rights of foreign as well as domestic investors. So, irrespective of the nationality of the investor, even if today I am investing my money and doing business in some other country or I am investing, uh, someone else is investing in my country and I am also doing the business in my country. So, there should not be any differentiation in the rights of investors. So, equality of the rights of foreign as well as domestic investors is one of the foundation or the basis for this principle and the sovereignty of states. So, each state is sovereign in whatever is going to happen within its territorial limits. So, based on this principle, this Calvo has put forward a doctrine or put forth a doctrine which is popularly now called as Calvo. Let us try to understand what his uh, yeah. principles are, what are his assertions as to how to deal with the disputes involving international investments. International investments means in the sense where people from other countries come and invest in my country. Now, this has been of such a great importance. You have been seeing 
I think the post COVID nineteen uh, COVID nineteen outbreak, there are there are videos which are uh, uh, being broadcasted are being uploaded on different social media saying that so many companies are coming to India to make investment here in India. So there is going to be investment from outside and. If at all a dispute comes with respect to this investment, how to deal with that? In this regard, Calvo has uh, explained some principles of international law. Let us try to find out what he says. So, reasons for and before proceeding to the doctrine itself, let us have a brief overview as to the reasons for emergence of this doctrine, the background. Because until unless we know the background, our understanding of this doctrine or any principle of law may not be. Complete. Let us try to understand the reason for the emergence of this doctrine and it is being widely used by South American countries, especially South American countries uh, during 1930s and 40s. Let us see and find out what is the background. So, reasons for it is uh, France imperialistic adventures in Mexico and other parts of Latin America. We know that there are few imperialist powers were there in the 18th century and 19th century. One is British, as the other important imperialist power is that of France. And these Latin American countries in, uh, uh, and Mexico, they are fed up with this uh, attitude of this imperialistic power at uh, adventures of France. And France and other European countries, they were treating uh, American intellectuals, whether they belong to South America or North America, they were not being given proper respect or their works are not being encouraged or they were not taken into consideration. So there are a lot of problems and there are these Britishers as well as French people, they are outraging American intellectuals. So this because of this, Calvo and other his supporters, they felt that these outsiders should not be allowed to interfere, interfere in our internal affairs because most of the investments, as it happens even now, most of the investments for business in India and in, in, in fact even in China, it comes from outside. Then how to deal with a dispute Within a country, when investments come from outside, can outsiders interfere or raise issues at the international level? These are few questions which were raised in those times, in those days. And France and other European countries, they kept on interfering uh, in the internal affairs of these uh, Latin American countries, which emerged as independent republic popular, populist governments in 1930s and 40s. So what happened? After the establishment of these uh, nationalist populist governments in 1930s and 40s, they said they tried to avoid the interference of these imperialistic powers with respect to investments they have made in these Latin American countries. Therefore, they, this, uh, uh, this doctrine which was stated by Calvo, Calvo became very popular in those days. Let us find out what is that doctrine all about. This doctrine tells us, this is the principle. So the doctrine is authority to settle international investment disputes resides in the government of the country in which the investment is located. Once a investment has been made in a country by, uh, by the foreigners, so then and if any disputes comes with respect to such an international investments, such a dispute cannot be the subject matter of uh, settlement at the international level. It has to be settled within the country. That is the first and the most important principle laid down by Calvo. Carlos Calvo says that this is how it has to be done. Authority to settle international investment dispute. Whenever dispute arises with respect to international investment, authority to settle. The power to settle this should reside in the government in the country in which that investment is located. Wherever they have the people have invested, irrespective of their nationality. He may be from Europe, he may be from America, he may be from America or he may be from Asia. Irrespective of the source from where the investment has come, once you have invested and if any dispute arises with respect to that international investment, it should be settled by the local government by, by applying the local laws and giving jurisdiction to local or municipal courts. This is what the doctrine all about and why this is being done, what are the objectives to be achieved as I told is to ensure that municipal courts to have jurisdiction in such legal disputes wherever international investment is involved. That is the primary object. Municipal courts are to have jurisdiction in legal disputes. Moving further, 
to ask the jurisdiction of international arbitral tribunals in the last class we had a discussion regarding internationalization of contracts whenever we are talking about the state responsibility for breach of contracts with aliens in this regard we had a discussion saying that most of these uh, agreements are going to be uh, dealt by the local as but there are going to be clauses some additional clauses are going to be included in the uh, contract itself in the form of uh, disputes to be referred to the international arbitration and further one more clause i think we discussed about that uh, that is called as uh, a clause which prevents a local legislature or the municipal legislature from alter altering the laws that is what we called as stabilization clause through this method international investments were easily taken to international tribunals so this these people from south america south american nations new nations which have come out of this colonialization they wanted to avoid they want to ensure that within their country their own municipal laws ultimately they are nationalist populist governments which have recently emerged out of colonial era so they wanted to prevent outside interference therefore this doctrine has been vehemently put forward by most of the latin american countries okay so this is the purpose so first of all to give jurisdiction to municipal courts and second one is to ask the jurisdiction ask the jurisdiction of international arbitral tribunals these are the objectives of this doctrine and the doctrine says that if at all there are disputes in the international investments the government of the country where the investment has been located that country is going to have jurisdiction and not by the not it and then should not be referred to the international arbitral so this is what is the doctrine all about point further is the current relevance is this doctrine or uh, the scalvo clause is still being followed or not that's one more important thing we should look, look into as far as even latin american countries are concerned not only latin american countries most of the countries they don't follow this uh, principle but strictly are almost these practices are now outdated the reason behind them is the reason is it in preventing states from protecting its own uh, its nationals abroad this is what the uh, doctrine talks about calvo class says that irrespective of your nationality once you have invested in some other country it is it is your fate to be dealt by the local class outs your your own country cannot come to protect you it is outside the jurisdiction of your your uh, your nation or its uh, officials or state interest you have invested and your investment is entirely going to be regulated by our own law so this doctrine try to prevent the states from protecting its nationals abroad but most of the nations they want to ensure that even their nationals are to be protected wherever they are in the field. you can find such steps being taken even now when our covid outbreak is there we have been bringing our own nationals wherever they are from if at all they are in distress we 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 are lending our helping hands to them similarly at all because of some of the uh, unreasonable acts of the country where they have been doing some business because of which they have been facing some problem definitely countries won't hesitate to lend their helping hand so that they can protect so this calvo clause did not want that to happen so and popularity among nations is towards multilateral conventions on international commercial arbitration nowadays we are in the age of globalization where the whole uh, of course we don't know what is going to happen after covid 19 but as of now we are still advocate most of us are promoting the concept of globalization and we wanted to ensure that international commercial arbitration is considered as the most effective it is considered as most popular among all the businessmen as well as nations to ensure that the disputes especially trade disputes connected with connected with international investments to be settled therefore this being the attitude of most of the states hardly we find any states which still apply calvo class thereby denying jurisdiction to a foreign state from protecting its own nationals investment in a in another country this is not being permissible this is not being practiced as of now at the international level 
So these are few things which we should know as far as calvoclasis cuts. So with this, I will conclude this session as far as calvoclasis is concerned. In the next session, we will be discussing about the state's responsibility for foreign debts. So we will be discussing that in greater details in the next session. Thank you.